let's imagine you've made an amazing platform game and you've even got enemies when you hit them, they're going to respawn you. But wouldn't it be great if we could get those enemies to move backwards and forwards so that they're not quite so easy to jump over? In this video, I'm going to show you the really cool path 2D node and the path follow 2D nodes that are going to help us do this. So I've started with a completely blank, empty project. I'm just going to add a no 2D onto it. And we're just going to use this as our top level enemy. I've just renamed that to enemy. The next thing we're going to do is add that amazing path 2D node to it. Um, from there, with the path 2D selected, you can see all the tools on the uh, top center of your screen. So with this add selected, I'm just going to click on the left. I'm going to click on the right. And to close the loop, I'm actually just going to create another point exactly where the first one was. It can be a little bit fiddly, but if you persevere, I'm sure you'll get there. The next step is to add the path follow 2D node. The path follow 2D node just sits underneath this. You can add anything you want to the path follow 2D, 2D node, including an entire enemy if you really wanted to. And it will behave exactly as it should behave, but it will follow the path as well. For our purposes, I'm just going to add a Sprite 2D so we can see something moving along the path. I'm just going to drag on the standard Godot SVG, and I'm also going to just make it a little bit smaller because it takes up quite a lot of space. I'm just going to scale that to uh, 0.5 across both the axes. And don't forget to save your scene so that you don't lose all this awesome work. Now this path follow 2D node has some awesome properties. This top one called progress, this is measured in pixels. And as you move that, you'll see that the object moves along the path backwards and forwards. There's also the progress ratio, and you can see this is between a zero and a one value, and it's a ratio along that path. Now, if you don't want it to turn around like ours did, you can switch rotations off as one of the properties. And then that way, when it moves across the path, it doesn't turn over as it does it. Our next step is to write the code to make it do that instead of doing it by hand. So we're going to put the code on the top level enemy and we're going to call this enemy.gd. The reason for that is we can make each enemy move at a different speed. So the first step we need to do is to grab a reference to that path follow 2D node. I'm going to do this with the at onready var. I'm also going to make sure that I include the path follow type so that um, I can get some really cool code completion um, when I'm coding with this. We can just use the dollar sign to drill down from the enemy down towards the path follow 2D, just like that. The next step is to add on an export variable that will appear in the editor for the speed of this particular enemy. And what we're going to do um, is make sure that this speed is in pixels per second. So I'm just writing myself a quick comment at the top to remember that what this is doing. And I'm just going to randomly choose 100 as the value. The next step is to get rid of the ready function because we're not going to need this one. We're going to do all of our work inside of the process function. And it's pretty easy. I'm going to get rid of the pass. And all I'm going to do is what we did when we were moving the uh, slider before. I'm going to find the path follow object. I'm going to find that property progress. And all I'm going to do is add on that speed. Um, and I'm going to multiply that by delta so it's in pixels per second. And that is it. Uh, I need to test this. So I'm just going to go back into the 2D view over here. And I'm going to move that top level enemy um, down into the middle. So I'm going to group it up first so that it doesn't end up um, moving parts of it rather than the whole thing. So given that a quick test for this scene, you should see that it will move at 100 pixels per second along the path. And because the end and the start of the path is the same place, it looks like it's just smoothly looping across the path. The next step here is to turn this into a reusable prefab. So I'm going to move it back to the center of the world again, or the center position of the world before I do that, so I don't get an offset for the prefab. Just right click and save branch as scene. I'm just going to call this enemy. Now we've got this enemy.tscn. Um, I can change this, this speed value for every single instance. So if I just drag out another enemy, let's firstly just Put this enemy somewhere else and let's drag out another enemy. What I can do is I can actually set, select one of the enemies and change the speed of it. And because it's an instance of the enemy, it will 
change for that specific version of it or specific instance. So you can see that they've both got different speed values. And when I test this scene, you'll see that they move at that independent speed value. But what we need to do now is be able to change the paths for them because we don't want the paths to be the same. So you can see that because they're scenes, we can't actually edit this path. The way that we fix this is we want to right click on them and make them local. So if you go down this list, you can see there's a make local on there. And what that does is it makes a local instance of that particular scene. You can then see that you can see all the parts of that and edit them. I'm going to quickly make this one local as well so I can show you another weird feature. So you'll see when I've got the path 2D selected, if I move the points, both of the instances actually move. And it's kind of weird. We want to be able to make it so that we can have different paths for different objects. The way you do it is head over to the Curve 2D and make unique. Because we're sharing the Curve 2D, it's going to be uh, the same Curve 2D. So just by making it unique, it means we can independently change each of the Path 2Ds for each of the enemies once you've made them local as well. So set, testing this scene, you can see that we have completely uh, independent paths and speeds for these enemies that we've made. So don't forget, once you've made your enemy.tscn scene and you need them to be independent, drag it on. You need to make this a local instance of it and then go across to the curve on the path 2D node and make that unique. And then you can have as many enemies across your scene following as many paths as you like in your game. So there we have it, the path 2D node and the path follow 2D node. I hope you have fun implementing them into your games now.